This is what I look like when I'm at work. I think this makeup looks good with a mask. So the cremation palette recently came out. It's really bad timing. I do think it does look distasteful. I can understand from a business point of view why the palette was released. Makeup is just makeup and I understand, you know, it can bring joy to a lot of people, but I bet you a lot of people might already have these kind of colors in there. I mean, how many shades of gray do we need? So I'm going to, I'm going to create a look using gray. It's totally out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to do it because I'm gonna show you that I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. So I'm gonna dupe the vibes of the uh, cremation palette today. So the majority of grays that I have, matte grays anyway, are from these uh, Lunatic Cosmetics palettes. Basically they're their contour palettes and there's volume one and two. This is volume one, which is the original. Uh, I've got a few pans out because they're actually um, in another palette. And then this one, which is all grays at the top here, but a bit kind of deeper tones. I'm gonna use a mixture of both and we're gonna create some sort of gray look. I'm gonna add some shimmer as well to the eyelid. Uh, at first I thought, let's try and recreate uh, some of the promo photos, but there's not many promo uh, photos for this palette. There's the look that Jeffree Star's wearing. Um, and I don't, I don't particularly like it. And there hasn't been much, I guess because of the whole um, coronavirus it's pretty hard to get people together and shoot like proper professional photos there's not really anything so I'm just gonna create my own kind of gray toned look I'm gonna use a matte gray in the crease and by the way I have actually used a bit of um, Tarte shape tape and then set it just because I've got really quite pigmented eyelids I feel like it needs a little bit of brightness to the lid before I add grays on top because grays are not particularly flattering for me does that look does that look okay? I probably should zoom you in, shouldn't I? So you can actually see. Just hoping that this is not gonna look too terrible. These eyeshadows blend out really nicely. Then I'm gonna use a deeper gray in the outer V. I think back in the day, grays were the basis or the foundation for a smoky eye, and I'm sort of glad they've moved away from that because I don't find them particularly flattering. On me at least. But really happy with the blend of these eyeshadows. I think they're really works so well. Okay, and then I'm gonna slather some uh, metallic goodness on top. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna do my lower lash line as well. I'm gonna use this color, which is not quite gray. It's like a grayish brown. I'm gonna use this glitter baby in a silver because this looks beautiful and I haven't actually used it before and I really do enjoy these Smith & Colt glitter babies. I think the formula is excellent. Super silver. And it already has kind of a blackened base already. And I might layer something else on top, we'll see. Can you see that shine? It's beautiful. This is why I love these liquid eyeshadows. I actually prefer these over the stiller ones. I'm just gonna add a bit more of that like deep shade to the outer V. Blend it in with the metallic. And I'm actually really happy with that. So that's, that's gray, but like, I don't think it looks sickly. And that's probably the most gray I'll ever go because I just don't usually do this kind of color scheme. Let's finish it off with some black liner and mascara. Because grays can usually wash me out, I am gonna add a bit more highlighter. So I'm gonna use um, Candlelight Powder from this palette that I finally used mentioned it in my video the other day. It's quite subtle, but it actually is quite nice, especially if you don't want to go too much with the highlight because you, you don't want to take away from the um, bling there. I'm gonna add a little bit in the inner corner as well. Lipstick, what to wear for lipstick? I'm gonna go for my Cezanne Nude from Bobbi Brown, just a easy nude lip. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go for something a little bit more cool toned. This one from RMK, uh, which I bought in Japan. We were actually planning on going to Japan this year, but obviously this happened and yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. It's kind of a, a strange color nude for me, but I think it works with a cool toned eye. So that's this gray look. I don't need 50 shades of gray. I've literally used, I think, one liquid eyeshadow and probably three, four, four different grays, that's it. Very simple. Hope you hope you like this look. I actually don't think it looks, it doesn't look bad, I don't think. There you go. Sometimes I can surprise myself. So you guys might've thought that's the end of the video, but as I was editing it, I was like, you know what? 
I can do better. Because you know what, this week I have been playing and experimenting with greys to see if I can use them in a way that I feel looks flattering. And although the cremation palette has recently been released, I haven't seen many people talk about it. There have been other kind of grey toned palettes that have come out. One that comes to mind is the Venus Immortalis palette, I think that's what it's called, by Lime Crime. And I actually prefer that colour scheme with greys more than the cremation palette, just because I feel like I prefer personally a more succinct layout. I don't need 25 different shades. I think eight is a nice amount of shades to have to give enough variety but not to the point where you feel so overwhelmed when you look at a giant palette and I also in particular like the addition of a purple I actually think that purples and grays go really well together and so today that's what I'm gonna kind of do I mean not necessarily purple purples I am again gonna use these two palettes because they're really the gray toned palettes that I have and I've been using this week and I actually do enjoy the looks but as you can see there are kind of some deep maroons, there's pinks and purple. I think these shades actually work really well. This time I'm not going to use any metallics because um, I'm going to work today and this is the look that I've been wearing to work and I do feel like it's quite flattering surprisingly. I've, I've been enjoying it so I'm going to share with you that look that is kind of inspired you know using other tones besides greys but tones that complement these greys. I'll zoom you in. Sorry if this looks really blue. I think maybe because I'm wearing this purple shirt everything is looking a little bit blue. If I change my top, I wonder if th that will make a difference. Do I look less blue <sighs> now that I've changed my top? I don't know. I am actually gonna show you how I've been priming my eyelids. I mean, it's not really a new technique, but I've got this Tarte Shape Tape and I kinda wanna use it up. So I've been using that and then setting it with a powder and then going over on top because greys, like I said, can make me look really tired. I feel like I need a bit more brightness on my eyes. So I am gonna do this. I don't usually do anything to my eyelids except put just primer on it. Um, well, that's a lot. And I have to say, putting such a light concealer on your eyes does look so strange to me. I have actually noticed that this works really well with these particular eyeshadows from Lunatic Cosmetics. They basically keep on the whole day, which is very impressive. Okay, so now my eyelids look strange. And gonna set them with powder. I'm gonna use my three powder. I'm almost done with this. I'm so excited. Can't wait till it's gone because I don't know. I've just not really liked this powder. I do think that this um, sifter is really good. I think I would reuse the packaging because I have some other setting powders that are in like tiny jars and I don't think that's practical. I don't know why all setting powders don't come in a giant jar like that. But anyway, I'm just gonna set my lid because I've got so many eyelid folds it has a tendency to all crease so I need to just set it. So they're set now and let's start using some grey. I've been using this brush from Rafa. This is a 01 brush. This is fantastic. I want like 10 of these and I'm gonna go in with a combination of these three shades. I'm just gonna tap my brush into these three shades and start putting that into the crease. Kind of haphazardly, not worrying that it looks messy or anything like that. This is the perfect kind of lay down blending brush. It's so good. I think dipping my brush into that kind of more mauve tone gives the grey a nice more flattering tone to it, I think. It doesn't look as ashy and I often do that. I I like to kind of put my brush in several pans and create my own variation on that color. And the good thing about this is that it is definitely buildable. It's not like bam and you have to continue to blend it out. I, I really, really have been enjoying this formula because I do think, like I said, grays can be really tricky to work with. And I'm just gonna blend it out with this um, Smith brush. This is the Smith 235. Next, what I like to do is I'm gonna take this Wayne Goss 19 brush. It's nice and tapered and it's a small like blending brush, but it's really good because you can really get into the socket. And I'm gonna take a combination of these three shades and dipping it into this purple as well. And I'm going to just put it in the outer V and also a little bit underneath where I've put the other three shades. So it's just giving it a little bit more dimension, blending it out as you need. And then I'm also going to dip in heavily into those three shades again and just build it up in that outer V area. Now I suppose if you wanted to deepen this up more, you could add a black, but I don't want it to look too harsh. So I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to do more of kind of a 
halo type of shape. So I'm going to add a little bit in the inner corners as well. Just the tiniest bit. And I guess although this looks quite grey, you can sort of see that hint of purple in there because I've mixed it with this colour. It's very subtle. I'm going to add some of that on the lower lash line as well. I'm just going to take this brush and just sweep it, whatever's remaining. So it just gives a little bit of dimension on the bottom as well. So that's pretty much the base of this look. And then I like to add some mascara, some liner, and that's what I've been doing. I really like that. Now, if you wanted to add a pop of shimmer on, you could totally do it. Or you could even add like a little bit of silver here. I'm not going to do that today, but that could look really cool. I'm going to add some liner just to give the illusion of thicker lashes. And because I've got a halo eye shape, I'm not going to flick it out or anything. I'm just going to keep it like just straight. I'm also going to tight line. And you know what? You don't have to use that. I reckon if you use like a really deep purple, that would also look really cool too as a liner, but I don't have that. I'm going to just use what I have. So one more thing I'm going to do before I finish this look is I'm going to add a bit of that candlelight powder in my inner corner and I'm going to add a little touch below the brow bone, which I don't usually do, but we're going to do that anyway. I think adding a shade like this looks really nice because it just adds a hint of light reflectiveness amongst these kind of murkier, cooler tones. And I'm going to add a bit of that powder with this Ella brush, Ella Cosmetics brush, and tap that on the cheekbones. So I was very tempted to use the same lipstick as the other day, but I'm like, no, let's have a bit more variety. <laughs> this is a nude though. So this is Coco Flash in 53 Chicness. It's a nice cool toned nude and I like it. I have been very minimal on the cheeks. Just put the highlight there, but you could just add whatever you want and add your own variation really. Okay, so this is the end result. I actually really like it. Like I said, I've been wearing this look to work several times in a row because I like it. I never thought I would wear greys out of the house, but here we are. It's 2020 and there's a lot of things happening that we didn't expect to happen. So um, greys are back in and I think we're going to continue to see greys in. So why not embrace it? I do think that dipping your brush into other shades besides the grey to give it a bit more of a different undertone can make the grey look a lot more flattering than usual like for example i have this color here right this gray add a bit here this is what that looks like with just the gray now let me dip it into a more red shade this one to see how that changes the tone look at that mixing them with other shades that you know are more flattering on you work better so I have actually been enjoying playing around with, um, you know, kind of dipping my brush into several shades to get the gray that I like. I'll do that same thing with uh, this purple as well. This is that um, gray by itself, okay? And then mixed in with the maroon shade, maroony purple shade. It does change the tone slightly. I don't know if you could see that. Let me zoom in. You see? Hopefully that kind of demonstrates what I'm kind of talking about um, on the eyelid. But anyway, a lot of you are saying that you don't think grey suit you. I really challenge you, you know, if you've got greys in your, in your collection, just try them out. Maybe try tweaking that grey by adding different tones in there. We don't have to just play with one shade. We can mix and match. You might be like me and pleasantly surprised. I don't know. I actually think greys would suit like... Some with blue eyes really well. I think it would bring out the blue a lot. Let me know what you think. Are you still like on the fence with greys? Are you kind of totally passing by all the grey palettes out there? Or are you, are you for it? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I really do challenge you guys to just try some grey this week. Got nothing to lose. It's all just makeup and fun. And if it doesn't look good, it doesn't. I am going to be doing another like capsule wardrobe with makeup and clothes for winter. And I totally could see me using this kind of gray tone look for winter because it's it's to me this is like winter a winter look a lot of people who are watching me are on the other side of the planet and in spring almost summer so this probably might not be a look that you would go to i don't know or you're one of those people that you wear whatever makeup whatever year round and i'm i am kind of like that i think that's that's all i have to say i 
I actually like it. I didn't think I would. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.